Hey there, home labbers and engineers. FE Engineer here. The other day I was talking to somebody on Reddit and they were effectively saying that they had an installation of Nextcloud that was having a lot of problems. It was exceedingly slow and they thought that maybe they needed to buy faster hard drives, which of course, if your hard drives are running slowly, such as using spinner drives, Faster drives could always improve performance. But as they told me about some of the problems and what was going on, it sounded to me more like it might be a configuration issue and especially a PHP issue happening, effectively a very long PHP execution times, which caused the page to seem to have quit or have crashed. However, they said that if they let it wait long enough, it would always come back. And so I thought this is something that I could definitely make a video. And this video will be about installing Nextcloud literally from an empty Ubuntu 2204 server all the way up to having a highly tuned and optimized Nextcloud installation. So let's take a look at what we need to do. So since we want to run the newest version of PHP, the newest version is PHP 8.2 and Ubuntu does not actually have it in its repositories. So what we are going to do is sudo apt-get install software properties common. Then we will need to sudo add apt repository ppa colon andrej slash php. This is an excellent place to get the most up-to-date PHP repositories. With that, we are going to sudo apt-get install php 8.2 fpm and Apache 2. Now that we have PHP and also Apache installed, we should be able to install literally everything else other than Nextcloud. So for that, we are going to sudo apt-get install image magic, php, imagic, memcache, lib memcache tools, mem php memcached, php abcu, mariadb server, and then the php extensions gd, mysql, curl, mb string, international, gmp, bc math, xml, zip, then we're going to install the clients for unzip and SMB client, which we will use later on. That took a few minutes, but now that that is all installed, we should be good to get things going. We wanna make sure that Apache is running PHP 8.2. In order to do that, we need to run sudo a2 in conf php 8.2 fpm. You should see a message that either says already enabled or enabling, and that means that Apache will now be using php 8.2. So, the first thing we want to do is create a virtual host for Nextcloud on Apache. To do that, we are going to sudo nano slash etsy slash apache apache2 sites available and we are going to create a, fi a file called nextcloud.conf inside of there i will have all of these commands and files available for you we are going to simply paste in this virtual host on line one of the virtual host, you'll see it is 
telling Apache to use the protocols HTTP2, H2C, and then HTTP1.1. So it will use HTTP2 whenever possible. This is for performance and optimization. It will significantly increase uh, speeds if you did not have this. The one thing in here you will probably need to change for Apache is the server name. The server name, if you are serving it out from a website, will be something like mywebsite.com. Uh, if you also have it available as www.mywebsite.com, you can also use the server alias to add that in. But then effectively, this says that the document root where Nextcloud is going to live is in slash var slash www slash Nextcloud. Inside of here, we set some, some security settings for strict transport. Other than that, we're using PHP Fast Page Manager, which requires this files match configuration. And then according to the Nextcloud documentation, inside of your directory, www.nextcloud, they say that you need to have these settings set up for it. And then of course we have an error log and a custom log that are all set up so that any logging in and out of the server and any errors happening will actually be logged out to these places. And this will set up our Apache virtual host. We should be able to hit Control X and then save modified buffer, save it with the same file name. In Apache, we need to enable a whole bunch of modules so that we can do all the things that we want. Not all of these are necessarily going to be used with this exact tutorial, but I did include a bunch that are commonly used for reverse proxies and setting up SSL, along with the ones that we will be using. So with that, the command is going to be sudo a2in mod headers rewrite npm event http2 mime proxy proxy fcgi set environment if alias directory environment ssl proxy http and proxy WebSocket tunnel. Just hit enter, everything should effectively enable. Just in case, we also want to sudo a2 dismod npm underscore prefork. With that, we should be able to enable our site and in order to do that, we can do sudo a2 end site. And we set up a site called nextcloud.configuration. And so to enable that site, we will run sudo a2 end site nextcloud.com. And it says enabling site nextcloud to activate system control reload Apache 2. So we will sudo system control reload Apache 2. The first configuration we're going to do is editing memcached. So we want to sudo nano slash etsy and then memcached. Inside of this memcached file, you'll see this dash m64. The 64 stands for megabytes of RAM that memcached will use. Depending on how much RAM you have on your server, you should consider giving it at least 512 megabytes, if not a gigabyte or even two gigabytes if you have plenty of RAM. So don't be too bashful, give it plenty of space. I'm going to set it to have one gigabyte. Exit and save. Now we're gonna do some next cloud recommended changes for using PHP Fast Page Manager. And the first thing that we're going to do is sudo nano slash etsy php 8.2 fpm pool www.conf. Inside of this file, 
we are going to go ahead and scroll down. And when we see this pm.max underscore children, this is not a lot that it is normally set to and Nextcloud can run into a little bit of troubles with the number of threads that Fast Page Manager will allow it to run straight out of the box. So we are going to increase this and in the max children, we're gonna set at 78. Start servers, we are going to set to a modest 20. Minimum spare servers, we are going to also set to 20. And maximum spare servers, we will set to 60. Also, inside of this folder, inside of this file, if we scroll down, there is a section that has to do with env environment variables. And we need to look for this section right here that has env hostname. And we are going to uncomment hostname, path, temp, and temp directory, and also temp temp. Make sure you go ahead and uncomment all of these, and then you can exit out of this file, save the modified buffer. With that, we also need to go ahead and go and edit the PHP INI file. So we're going to sudo nano etsy php 8.2 fpm php.ini. Inside of the PHP INI, you can simply page down. The first one we're going to look at is this memory limit. 128 megabytes of memory for a script is a lot, but just in case we're going to increase it to 256, that really shouldn't be necessary. But we're going to do it just to ensure that we don't end up with any troubles. You can continue paging down and effectively what we are looking for is post size and upload size. Post maximum size, eight megabytes. It depends on what you're using Nextcloud for, but occasionally this post size can come into play. I know it's happened plenty of times on WordPress. So instead of eight megabytes, I'm going to go ahead and up it to 512. After that, we are looking for upload. And I see file uploads, upload max file size. Since this is Nextcloud, if you are uploading photos, they could potentially range anywhere from under one megabyte all the way up to seven, eight, maybe even 10 megabytes. If you are uploading actual videos, the file sizes could get really large. I don't typically upload long videos, so I can give it 1,024 megabytes, so one entire gigabyte and be safe. But if you do upload larger videos, you should potentially consider putting that up to effectively several gigabytes. After we've uploaded, after we've edited upload max file size, you can actually page down to the very bottom. And after that, you can then scroll up to this section talking about OP cache. Scroll up until you see the green letters here, OP cache. You'll see this signifies the PHP extensions. 
And so now we are in the OP cache section. Inside of OP cache, the first thing we're going to do is delete this semicolon. And the semicolon effectively is a comment for the line and makes the line do nothing. So by deleting that semicolon, now OP cache will be enabled. One typically equals yes when it comes to computers. So we are going to enable OP cache. We are going to set the memory consumption. Instead of 128, we're gonna go all the way up to one gigabyte at 1024. If you have enough RAM, you can go even higher. For intern strings buffer, we're going to change that to 64. Max accelerated files, we are going to update from 10,000 to 150,000. Since we've increased our memory so much, we can go ahead and allow for a little bit more on max wasted percentage. So OP cache max wasted percentage, update that to 15. The OP cache revalidate frequency, go ahead and up this to 60, otherwise your server can churn from a lot of revalidating the OP cache. Nextcloud specifically says to turn on OP cache save comments. And after that, there are a couple special OP cache commands that Nextcloud recommends. Whenever I am adding special commands, I always go to the very bottom of the section and then I add my things to the bottom so that if I'm ever looking for custom things that I've changed, I know I can always find them at the very bottom. And Nextcloud recommends using opcache.jit and setting that to 1255 as well as setting opcache.jit underscore buffer underscore size and setting that to 128 megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and just give it 256. I have plenty of RAM available. With that, I'm going to exit and save. Now that these two pieces are done, so we've updated memcached and updated PHP configurations. We should sudo system control restart memcached and then sudo system control restart PHP 8.2. Restarting these allows our new configurations to take effect. So now we have effectively set up Apache and restarted it, set up memcached with our configuration, restarted it, set up PHP with our configuration and restarted it. Now we need to go and set up MySQL. For that, we need to type in sudo MySQL. We are using MariaDB instead of the generic MySQL. And the reason that we are using MariaDB is frankly just that it is more performant than MySQL. You'll be able to tell that we are inside of MariaDB because on the left-hand side of the cursor, it will in fact say MariaDB. And we want to create user. I'm going to call this user server at localhost identified by, and then our password. I'm just gonna use one, two, three, one, two, three, and then a semicolon. Whenever you are working inside of the databases, mostly all commands are all capital letters. That way you know what the commands are using. When you're inputting information, you typically use lowercase. That way you know the difference between the commands you're using and what you're setting, uh, because it'll be lowercase, and then Every single time you type out a command, you need to end it with a semicolon. Hit enter, it'll say query okay, and that means that 
the command that you input, it accepted it. Next, we're going to create database if not exists. We're going to call this database next cloud. It's going to be using the character set UTF 8 MB4. It's going to collate. And we're going to use character sets of UTF 8 MB4 collated with UTF 8 MB4 general CI. Hit enter, you should see query OK. Grant all privileges on nextcloud.star to server at localhost. And then flush privileges. If you do all of these things, you have effectively gone into your database, created a user, in our case, we created a username server, gave them a password. In this case, the password was 123123. We created a database called Nextcloud. We allowed server to access and use the Nextcloud database. And then we effectively reloaded all of the privileges. That way, they are all now up and running. And with that, we can type quit semicolon to exit out of MariaDB. So now we can cd var www. This puts us into the var www directory, and this is where Apache serves websites out of. If we ls, we'll see that there's an HTML directory, and there is nothing else. So now we are ready to finally download and install Nextcloud. As of recording this video, the current version of Nextcloud is 27.1.3. You'll see here on the Nextcloud website, if you find the newest version, 27, click on See More. It'll scroll down, 27.1.3 is the newest version. You can go to this zipped file, right click and hit Copy Link, and then Type sudo wget and paste, and it will automatically use the newest version. And their servers have been pretty slow to download from, so I'm going to stop the video while this downloads. Now that Nextcloud has finished downloading, I can simply sudo unzip Nextcloud. Now that Nextcloud has finished unzipping, we need to change the owner of the Nextcloud directory and effectively give Apache ownership rights. So for that, we are going to sudo chown, which means change owner, minus big R www.data or www-data colon www-data. And we are going to apply this to var www nextcloud. If you have any problems getting your website to load up with nextcloud, make sure that you have enabled your site with sudo a2 insight nextcloud.conf. Make sure if you've done anything, system control reload Apache 2, as well as check your site's available nextcloud.conf file and make sure that you have the correct server name. For myself, I'm just using an IP address, and so my server name needs to have the correct IP address. But with that, you'll see that Nextcloud is now available. Username, I'm just going to put in as John. Password, I'm going to use 123123. The data folder, var www nextcloud data is entirely fine by me. The database user, this is what we put in MariaDB. The database user, we named it server. The password we put as 123123. 123. 
and the database name was nextcloud and it was running on localhost. So then go ahead and hit install. Once nextcloud is finished, uh, you'll see things popping up saying to offer remember saving your password, okay. It's going to ask you if it can install some apps. I'm going to say no. It's going to pop up a video, but now Nextcloud is up and running. One of the very first things that I do is I go over to my apps. I go to disabled apps. I find external storage support. I go ahead and enable that. And then I go into administration settings, external storage. I happen to have a NAS and I use that as external storage. If you remember, we installed on our server something called SMB client and we installed that so that it would be available here. And SMB SIFS, the host for my, my NAS is 192.168.0.22. The share is slash test slash. And I'm not going to use this next cloud, so I'm going to make it available for all users. The username is John. And then there's my password for my NAS. And that gives me a check mark. So now when I go into files, I have a new folder in here called NAS. Oh, that's weird. I guess it hadn't gotten it quite yet. So, okay, files. So when I go into NAS, I have one picture that has been copied 22 times. And you'll see that it's the exact same actual picture. It's just been copied a whole bunch. And so it's 2.6 megabytes. But I wanted to show this because the person who effectively I made this video to help out was saying that if he went to look at any of his photos inside of Nextcloud, effectively the page would lock up for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute or maybe even longer. I don't really know, but he said that he basically had to just sit and wait for it to come available. And from my side, I kind of sat there and I said, well, that really shouldn't be. It should, you know, it should be pretty fast. It should be almost instant. So now Nextcloud is up and running, but we still have one more thing to actually do. And for that, we are going to go back to our command line. We're currently in var www nextcloud. We're going to cd into config. And then inside of here, we're in a sudo nano config. We're going to edit the config.php file. These changes to our configuration file are taken straight out of Nextcloud's documentation. But effectively, we want to enable memcaching local, distributed, and locking. And for local, we're going to use the APCU. Otherwise, we're going to use memcached. Hit Control X, save that. And then just because we've gone and added something that we want it to start using memcached. It doesn't necessarily hurt to sudo system control restart Apache 2. sudo system control restart PHP 8.2. sudo system control restart memcached. You shouldn't need to start all these, but just in case it never hurts to just restart them all and ensure that they are all picked up and using the correct configurations. And with that, as you go ahead and start using Nextcloud, you should notice it actually gets faster and faster because of all of the caching that you have set up. You'll see now when I loaded this page, every single preview and stuff effectively loaded instantly. That should be all that you need to do to tune up and to optimize your Nextcloud server and configuration. Thank you so much for watching my video.
Thank you so much for watching my videos, home labbers and engineers. I create and edit all of these videos on my own, so any likes and subscribes will massively help out the channel and allow me to continue creating content to help people. If you got value out of this, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel to be notified when new content drops. If there's something I've not covered but you would like to see a video on it, please leave a comment down below. And again, a massive thank you to everyone. I hope you have a great day.